Well, I'm Jonathan Band. Uh, I'm a copyright lawyer with my own firm, Policy Bandwidth, and I do a lot of uh, work for the uh, Association of Research Libraries and also for the Library Copyright Alliance. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit today about the Hathi Trust decision uh, and what it means for libraries. So to start all the way at the beginning, uh, uh, the Hathi Trust litigation grows out of uh, the Google Books uh, project. Uh, Google, as many of you will recall, was, uh, uh, started to scan uh, the, all the books in research libraries, uh, originally the University of Michigan, but then uh, several other uh, research libraries. Uh, as part of the arrangement uh, between Google and the libraries, uh, Google agreed to make available to these libraries that, was, that were providing them with the books to scan, the, the, the Google agreed to provide them with uh, digital copies of the, uh, of the scans that, uh, of the books that, that uh, the libraries had made available to Google. Um, so Google got sued for uh, its, uh, its project, for its scanning of all these works, and that led to um, a whole side, a, a, a whole lengthy process. Uh, again, they, 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 they were scanning the books, they were sued, uh, they entered into a settlement agreement. There was actually two lawsuits, one by the Authors Guild, one by the publishers. Um, uh, a settlement was reached, uh, then the settlement was rejected. Now, one of the parts of the, in, in, in the litigation against Google resumed. Now, one of, the, one of the parts of the, one of the features of the settlement was that um, uh, rather than each library having its own digital set of the books that it had made available to Google, the idea was that there would be one large database uh, and that uh, uh, the libraries that participated would have access to that database. So you'd have the Google database and Google would be doing uh, whatever it was planning on doing under the settlement with its database and then there would be the separate database. Uh, and that uh, it really was the origin of Hathi Trust, uh, or, or, or the, the, the part of the Hathi Trust uh, that was the subject of this litigation. Now, the, the way this separate database worked, uh, the Hathi Trust database, is Google, basically, again, they had their database, and then they, what they did is they sort of made those books, those digital scans, available to Hathi Trust. Uh, and HathiTrust downloaded those digital copies, and so there was a, a copy uh, uh, on computers at the University of Michigan, and then there was a mirror copy at the, uh, uh, I believe, at Indiana University, and then there were also uh, hard copies, several hard copies. Uh, I mean, not, not, not printouts, but they were offline uh, copies on disks uh, and secure locations at the University of Michigan. So once the settlement collapsed, there were, again, there was the Google database, and so the lit litigation against Google resumed, and there was this Hathi Trust database. And the Authors Guild uh, decided to sue the Hathi Trust for its database. Uh, now originally there was, again, another side issue. Everything here is incredibly complicated. Originally there was a, a side issue there that, 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 uh, that Hathi Trust had announced an orphan works project where they would, uh, after making some effort to identify the, uh, the rights holders of, of some of the books, um, uh, and then publish a list of these books saying, look, we, you know, we weren't able to identify the right, we couldn't, we couldn't locate the rights holders of these books, then they were going to be make the, 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 the full text of those books available. Um, uh, the Authors Guild complained about that. Uh, uh, Hathi Trust stopped that project, but nonetheless, um, the Authors Guild sued them over the, uh, the, the, this Orphan Works project that again had been suspended. In addition, Hathi Trust had several other intended uses of uh, its database. So uh, one of the, the uses was very similar to what Google was doing. So remember, what Google was doing with its DIRT database is it's, it just provided search functionality so that you could type in a a term, and then the Google database would return a list of all the books where that 
uh, term appeared. Uh, and also uh, then indicating how many times the term appeared in any given book. So Hathi Trust was doing the same kind of, it did the same kind of thing. It had the same kind of functionality where you could um, search, um, uh, search uh, terms and then identify what books contained that term uh, and, and how, how often they appeared and where they appeared in the book. Now a big difference between uh, Google's search functionality and HathiTrust's search functionality is that with Google they would uh, display snippets. So they would display the first three times that term appeared in the book and with a cup with ba basically like an eighth of a page where that term appeared. So you'd be able to get a little bit of sense of the context. HathiTrust did not display any text. It simply said, this search term appears in the book, and these following books at this number of terms at times, providing bibliographical information and so forth, but not actually uh, uh, providing uh, any, any, uh, any context. It just said, these are the, the, the books that have the words, and this is where the words appear. These are the page numbers where the, these words appear. Um, uh, another thing that uh, Hathi Trust provided is, is based on that is, is you also would be able to do sort of uh, 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 digital research. You would be able to sort of search the whole database and determine, you know, when were certain words being uh, used, uh, uh, that kind of data mining. Uh, another uh, function of the uh, Hathi Trust database is that they, they announced that they would make full text available to print disabled students who were enrolled in the HathiTrust institution so that they would be able to see, to read the full text. Um, you would have sort of like a, a text-to-speech functionality uh, uh, or other, other functionalities uh, so to, to, make, to make these uh, works more available to the print disabled. Um, now, the, uh, uh, so, so when the Authors Guild sued HathiTrust over the Orphan Works Project, they also sued um, uh, HathiTrust for maintaining the database for these other functions. Um, HathiTrust uh, responded that this was all protected under fair use. Uh, with respect to the, um, the, the Orphan Works Project, they said that, that that part of the claim was moot because they had suspended the project. Uh, so that part of the case was moot, but with respect to everything else, they said it was all protected under the fair use doctrine. Uh, the lower court, uh, Judge Baer, back in 2012, I believe, found that it was in fact a fair use, uh, and and he said um, uh, the, uh, the the search functionality, the um, uh, uh, the, uh, the the making access uh, full text access to the print disabled, and he also said digital preservation. That these are all. Uh, 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 uses that, that follow up within the fair use uh, rubric and so are non-infringing. Um, Authors Guild appealed to the Second Circuit. Uh, there were a lot of amicus briefs both in favor of the Authors Guild and in favor of Hathi Trust. And what the Second Circuit, the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit, just did a couple of months ago uh, is it affirmed the lower court's decision and it found that Hathi Trust was a fair use. So first, with respect to the search functionality, it said that this was a transformative use, that um, uh, uh, what HathiTrust is doing is, is creating a new, using these works in a new way uh, uh, to provide the search functionality uh, in that new way uh, because it's transformative. Um, it doesn't supersede the original use that the, uh, that the authors uh, in, intended for these works, and so the, the first fair use factor, the nature and purpose of the work, weighed in favor of the use. Also, the, the, when, with respect to the fourth factor, which is the impact on the market, the, the court basically said, look, if it's a transformative use, we really don't care about the market impact. It, it, there is, there, the, and, that, and that was sort of like a building on earlier decisions, but that's a very important uh, holding long term, that the, 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 the reinforcing the notion that if if it's a transformative use, if the use is transformative, then the fact that you could theoretically have licensed it uh, is, is not 
really relevant, uh, uh, and, and so and so, all that weighs in favor of a finding of fair use. Um, with respect to the print disabled, the court actually found that that was not a transformative use, but even though it wasn't transformative, and it, and it wasn't transformative because the, the the print disabled would use the works in the manner that the authors intended. In other words, they would just read the books. It's just a different market. So the court said that that was not a transformative use, but nonetheless it was a fair use under the four factors uh, 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 set forth in the statute. Uh, that um, uh, uh, in particular that, that uh, Congress had expressed an interest in um, making sure that the print disabled had access uh, to materials and also because this is a, it's a small market and it was the publishers had not served the market, then there really was no uh, adverse market impact. And so, um, so, so the, the, the court ruled with respect to that use that it was uh, a fair use. Um, now, with respect to digital preservation, there's the, the, what the court did was interesting and a little confusing. So the district court simply said, ah, you know, preserving these works digitally, that's a good thing. Uh, and that's a fair use, um, has no negative uh, market impact, and the court really didn't spend much time talking about it. This is the lower court. In the Second Circuit, they, they didn't look about at digital preservation generally, sort of the, or the issue of mass, because to some extent that was subsumed by the other holdings, meaning you can only have a search index, you can only do the search function if you already have this digital database. And you can only provide access to the print disabled if you already have this digital database. And so if you already have this database, uh, all the, the database of all these books, and we're talking about over 10 million uh, digitized books, then, then obviously if you already have the database, then, then it's, it's already preserving this preservation function. So, so what, the, what the Second Circuit was looking at was a narrower issue, meaning under what circuit, you know, could you basically May give access uh, to those preserved works uh, in the event that the hard copy ha had, had deteriorated and was no longer available. In other words, the kinds of uses that are permitted under uh, Section uh, 108C and the, of the Copyright Act. And so, so that, that's what it ended up, that sort of ended up being what the Second Circuit looked at. And it said, in essence, it was it was remanding that issue, was sending that issue back to the district court because there wasn't any evidence that there were going to be any books under copyright owned by these, uh, the authors who were remaining in the litigation who would be affected by it. So it was kind of a very technical issue, very technical ruling. It sounds like they remanded digital preservation, but again, it's not the big digital preservation issue about whether you know, you can engage in mass digitization because to some extent, again, as I indicated, for the, for the first two parts of the case, for the, for the first two parts of the holding with respect to search functionality and access to the print disabled, you already needed to have this digital database um, uh, that, that could serve this preservation function. Uh, so so the, the remand is on this much narrower issue. So we now have this um, uh, basically a, a, a very, very clear, strong victory for libraries um, uh, with respect to uh, mass digitization. Um, where does this case go from here? Well, as always, it's complicated. Um, it could go in several different directions. Um, it, it is conceivable still that they might, <coughs> that the Authors Guild might ask the Supreme Court uh, to review the case right now. Alternatively, they could go back to the district court and go through the remand. Uh, so, so it's a little uncertain at this point what direction uh, the case will go in. I think at least that threshold issue should be resolved um, timing-wise in the next, in the, next uh, in the near future. But I think uh, overall, the, 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 the case is a very, very positive, a very, very positive one for libraries. It should give uh, great comfort to libraries that want to engage in uh, digitization projects. Again, here it was Google that was doing the initial scanning, but then the libraries were sort of downloading uh, 
uh, the, these scans into their own databases. Uh, and so, um, uh, but, but the holding would apply if the libraries were going to be doing their own scanning in the first instance. Um, so, so I think that it does, um, uh, it, it should give libraries great comfort with respect to mass digitization projects. Um, and then the, you know, sort of the big question is, is, is access. Under what conditions uh, can the library provide access to those uh, scanned files? So we know access to the print disabled is okay. Uh, other kinds of access, I think, have to be looked at uh, uh, on a more uh, fine-grained, uh, fine-tuned basis. But I think that that is something that libraries, uh, that's an activity libraries should be doing. There should be sort of talking and thinking and, and analyzing and seeing what other forms of access uh, can they make both with respect to this specific Hathi Trust database but also their own uh, mass digitization projects.